when I had a panic attack so bad that I actually thought I was having a heart attack. Oh my goodness. Hi everyone and welcome. This is your host Trudy Carlson and you're watching or listening to Conversational Lounge Media where we mentor, connect and inspire others through real life stories. As you know, May since 1949 has been observed as a mental health awareness month and this is a month that we come together and we each play a role and each play a part in breaking the stigma surrounding the subject of mental health. Without further ado, this next guest is someone, a close friend of mine, <laughs> and I am so excited that she accepted to come to the show. I know this is not an easy topic, so I am so glad that Jasmine, you're here, and thank you so much. I'm gonna get in my softbox a little bit, but just, you know, being brave and, and being open to just share your story. Yeah, thank you. Um, like you said, that's you know kind of my mission is to normalize it so people don't feel so alone in their journey to bettering themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jasmine, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi there. Walk us through your journey. Okay, yeah. So um, my name is Jasmine Briley. I am born and raised here in central Iowa. I um, had the pleasure of meeting Trudy, gosh, how many years ago now? Oh my goodness. How long have our husbands known each other? <laughs> oh, years. <laughs> Since uh, junior high, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, as long as you and Kayla have been together, you know, mm -hmm. how long we've known each other. And it's been great growing our friendship and <laughs> oh my dealing gosh. with the boys' shenanigans. <laughs> yes. And I remember Jasmine always telling Kayla, when are you going to propose to this <laughs> this woman when yes. are you gonna marry her yeah well it happened well <laughs> we knew something was different with you we just did so I was like okay anytime now it's it's gonna happen sooner or later so just do it so <laughs> yeah um so yeah like you said uh, uh broaching the subject of mental illness is um can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people. And I think it is very important to break the stigma so um, people can have a good healing journey and know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. So um, I myself suffer from anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. and um, I'm also borderline obsessive compulsive, which all three of those kind of play into each other. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So when did you discover that, you know, you suffer from, you know, anxiety or the OCD? Did, did something change in your life or what, what made you aware? Yeah, good question. So I had li been living with symptoms for anxiety pretty much always. I just didn't realize that's what it was. Um, it wasn't until I was about 19 when I had a panic attack so bad that I actually thought I was having a heart attack. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so like my heart was racing. I even had kind of pain down my arm and I was like, oh my gosh. And to me, it kind of felt like it came out of nowhere because, uh, you know, there wasn't anything super stressful going on. Um, I was actually just driving around Ames. Um, I don't know, just like shopping or something. And then, yeah, bam, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, am I dying? Like, oh my gosh, what it, it yeah. just hit you. <laughs> yes. Wow. So I pulled over. Mm -hmm. I called my mom. She, of course, was like, you're fine. You know, quit overreacting. Overre See, this is exactly <laughs> what we need to talk about. It's, right. it's always uh, everybody right. telling you that, no, nothing's wrong with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so I was like, okay, you know, you're not helping. <laughs> there is something wrong with me, clearly. <laughs> so then I um, just called first nurse. Like, mm -hmm. um, and she, you know, kind of helped me do some breathing to calm down and asked if I was still having, you know, the pain in my arm or, you know, as much pain in my chest. And I, I didn't. So, you know, mm -hmm. she was able to help me calm down. And she said, well, I think you just had a really bad panic attack. Wow. Do you have anxiety? And I said, well, I don't, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, but then that was like, well, okay, obviously I need to go get that checked, whether it is, you know, anxiety or I have a real heart issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I did, I made an um, uh, appointment with my doctor and I had already been um, diagnosed with um, 
depression. And then I also in high school had bouts of insomnia. So mm -hmm. my depression had actually shifted more into anxiety. So, wow. Mm -hmm. Is there triggers that can make it shift one or the other? Yes. And um, my, my trigger for anxiety and PTSD, which um, I didn't know I had until um, a few years ago uh, when I was having some other issues and having a hard time dealing with my anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, basically what happened was I was strangled um, by my brother when I was 17. Oh my gosh. So I'm yes. so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty intense. So um, I actually had a um, history of abuse. Um, I was raised by a stepdad who was verbally and physically abusive. Um, and that's why I had suffered um, with depression. Um, however, you know, thinking you got past that and now you're in a safe space um, and then being attacked by my older brother is what, you know, kind of shifted more into the anxiety. I am so sorry. Yeah. That is, wow. Yeah. The two people that mm -hmm. are, you know, essentially family-wise too close to you. Right. And then, wow. Right. I, I, I don't even have words. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm smiling now because mm -hmm. that's a coping mechanism. It's called masking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when uh, you are talking about when you have, you know, uh, PTSD or anxiety, um, when you're talking about something that is actually very serious mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people are, you know, like, oh, you know, pretty ch like chill about it. Mm -hmm. um, our brains try to like make light of the situation. Is it a toxic trait? Yeah. And it's actually, so, and part of it is a physical trait as well, mm -hmm. because when you've been through um, physical abuse, mm -hmm. um, your body physically responds, even just thinking about it. And that's what part, um, what part of PTSD is. Wow. Yeah. So you can just think about it and still feel the same physical yeah. feeling you yeah. felt at that time. Yeah. So right now my, you know, my chest is very like tight. Um, yeah. I'm feeling very anxious. My body is kind of tense. Um, yeah. But then your brain is like, you're fine, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? So then that's why, um, you might smile or laugh or, you know, have kind of inappropriate reactions mm -hmm. or what other people would deem inappropriate to mm -hmm. it. So, wow. Yeah. That is just very eye opening. And I just, you know, I, I applaud you for even coming, coming and sharing this with everyone because just like what you just said, or you just told me right now, is every time you go to that place or you yeah. think about that experience, you experience it again. Yeah. So just by you sharing this, you're truly opening yourself up to experience that again. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah. I, <laughs> I will try not to cry because I don't yeah. want you to feel, you know, to... No, I, yeah. <laughs> that's, and, you know, that's, that's okay if you do because it, mm -hmm. it is. It's a serious and it's a very sad subject. And that's, you know, and um, not a, pe a lot of people like to talk about it because it does make other people feel uncomfortable. So, therefore, they're alone in mm -hmm. their own journey. And that's why I say it's important to come out and just share my story and try to normalize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then does it help to talk about it to someone? Or, yes. Or it yes. And no. Okay. So it just kind of depends on the person. I think, um, where they are, mm -hmm. um, for a very long time. So, um, going kind of back to my childhood, my, my mom claims mm -hmm. that she was unaware that we were being physically abused. Or um, maybe like not as bad, you know, mm -hmm. type of thing. Because she was raised by an alcoholic abusive father, you know. So it's just kind of passing down generational trauma at the same time. Mm -hmm. And who wants to admit that they put their children in an unsafe situation, you know. So I can see for her why it is hard to face the facts mm -hmm. and the truth. Um, you know, and she, she says, I did the best I can. And 
that may be true with you know her own emotional um, stability and you know being with him made it more financially stable um, you know so yes okay you are doing the best you can and we were abused mm -hmm. you know All so right. a lot of people say that thinking okay end of end of subject mm -hmm. you know not, you know that's that but both things can be true you know, mm -hmm. so I am trying very hard to be empathetic and realize that, you know, maybe she really did think she was doing the best she could at that time. So that is a tough, yeah, a tough spot. Yes. Because now you're taking yourself to try and try, try to understand where she's coming from. Yeah while still harboring the actual reality of what happened to you. Right. At what point would you say, did you feel comfortable telling your mom, this is actually what happened to me? Is it during around the same time or did you wait until way later? Yeah, so, um, you know, like I said, she, you know, like being spanked was normal, um, but like being beaten, you know, and um, we were made to like stand up against the wall for hours at a time. Um, my mom worked second shift, so she wasn't necessarily home with me when these things happened. Now, you know, whether she noticed the welts on us or not, you know, um, my older brother and him would actually get in like physical fist fights, you know. So, I mean, there was signs of abuse, mm -hmm. um, whether she wanted to see them or not, I don't, you know. Um, but it actually was when they were going through their divorce. Um, they do have a child together, my youngest brother, Corey. Mm -hmm. um, they had to go through this class called Children in the Middle in Mediation. And then we also had to do like family counseling. Mm -hmm. And that's when um, my older brother and I shared, you know, how, how we were abused by him. So... And then when you're sharing that is in a professional setting. Right. Where you felt safe. Yes. And you had a counselor that had your back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So by sharing that, did you get the support you needed or did you at least feel supported through your journey? Uh, no. Because that's when she was like, well, I did the best I could and I didn't know it was happening. So it was like, okay. And, um, you know, she uh, turned to, I mean, like, we, we were always, you know, raised as Christians. Mm -hmm. But she turned a little further into religion mm -hmm. to kind of um, be the scapegoat, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's like, well, just pray about it and every, you'll be better. And that's kind of what led to, you know, more issues. Her denial of things, you know, kind of led to more issues. So my older brother started um, using drugs because he was having a hard time coping with, you know, what we dealt with growing up mm -hmm. and um, he was, um, and um, you know, our family actually, the males have a history of um, bipolar with schizophrenia. So my, my grandpa, he was diagnosed schizophrenic. However, I think, you know, now, you know, knowing more about mental health, um, he would have been diagnosed bipolar with schizophrenic episodes because of addiction, because he was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So um, my brother, anyway, so turned to drugs, and he was um, on um, meth and drunk, and that's when he physically assaulted me. It was just something as simple as me asking him to have his friends leave because it was like two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and it was a couple days before I was gonna start school so I was you know like okay I'm trying to get back into a normal routine and you're in the basement partying and it's not really appropriate anyway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah he just flew off the handle and attacked me wow yeah that is tough that's yeah. a tough pill to swallow and then when you confronted him in a place where he wasn't in that state of being intoxicated, how did he react to this? Um, he claims that he doesn't remember it. It's always the not remembering. Right. So, of course, the police were involved. I called 911 because I 
could have been killed that evening. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so then the state decided to do a no contact order. Mm -hmm. um, and I had came home two days after the incident and he was there. And I felt very upset and unsafe. Um, mm -hmm. So I went to the police station and I said, hey, you know, my brother is there. And they said, well, you know, technically we could arrest your mom as well because she is also in violation by letting him be there. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, <laughs> I don't want him <laughs> there. Want to be <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, then they were both upset that I had, had, trouble yeah, had turned him in. Yeah. So because he, he didn't know what he was doing because he was under the influence, so I should just excuse it. And then going back to, well, you should just pray for to forgive him, and you would feel better about it. Wow. Yeah. Uh -uh. yeah. I, wow. That's just another toxic trait is you should, you're causing trouble by speaking up. Yes. And then now the victim is placed in a position where it's your fault. It's your fault mm -hmm. that now the police are involved. It's your fault you spoke up. Right. Wow. Yeah. So um, he actually ended up going to prison because of his involvement with meth and um, things. Mm -hmm. And he got clean. And years of my mom being like, well, just pray for forgiveness. Just pray about it. Let's all pretend nothing ever happened and we're all good. Mm -hmm. So it was just easier to feed into that. Just mm -hmm. kind of pretend like it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And try not to hold anger against, mm -hmm. you know, her and him. And, you know, so I, I did the best I could mm -hmm. um, until I couldn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's silly because it's just such a small thing to be upset about. But my mom had promised to do something for me, and she hadn't. And it just brought back all this anger. And I was already struggling because they, um, about I think it was probably six months before, mm -hmm. um, at this point my brother had moved and went to treatment. So he'd been sober for a year. However, had never reached out to make amends to me mm -hmm. um, or discuss what happened. Um, and I said, well, I, I don't want a relationship with him, you know, because at this point I'm starting to set boundaries, mm -hmm. which people Good. don't like, <laughs> you know. Good when, for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, that she just couldn't accept that, though. So she um, actually ambushed me with him at my place of work, um, yeah, just was trying to force a relationship between us. And I, yeah, I just, she couldn't respect how I felt. Um, she couldn't accept that I didn't want a relationship with him. So what I would make you feel angry and always, you know, I'd always felt, um, you know, like I took a backseat to him anyway, because he was so much drama and she was always trying to save him and help him and fix him. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's always about him. So, and then it's like, oh, God forbid we hurt his feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, it's, you know, about him and mm -hmm. not about how I feel and, or how, you know, it's mm -hmm. about how they feel. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I was, dealing with some anger from that, mm -hmm. all of that. And then, yes, yeah, she had promised to do something for me and didn't. And I just snapped. Um, and that's when a lot of my PTSD symptoms started triggering. Mm -hmm. So, um, lots of panic attacks, um, anger outbursts. I can't wear. So for a time, after my assault, um, I could wear necklaces, mm -hmm. but I can't now. I can't have anything. I mean, just this being right here, it's too I have to. Yeah, I have to kind of. So I can't wear necklaces. I can't have anything tight. Um, Jesse, my husband, he mm -hmm. has to be careful about how he approaches me and hugs me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because just things like that just, you know, just make you very, very uncomfortable. So, wow. Yeah. That is a very complex journey you went yeah. through. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, yeah. And so during that time when, you know, your mom was trying to force this relationship, mm -hmm. how did you overcome that? Uh, I quit talking to her. Okay, so you set your boundaries. Yep, I said, okay, space. if you're not going to respect how I feel, then mm -hmm. I cannot have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. So I actually, um, and <laughs> she still couldn't really respect that. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to block her on social media. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I'm leaving your phone number open in case there's a family emergency. But if you contact me again, I will also block your phone number. Like, I, I don't want anything to do with you at this point. I was just very angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has she ever tried to come to one of, you know, one of your therapy sessions? Because I know you mentioned about the children. Was it children in the middle? Yeah. Well, so that was, um, that was uh, when, you know, we were still teenagers. So that was mm. before, you know, what happened with my brother even. Um, but I, because I was having a lot of issues emotionally and physically, um, from being re-triggered, um, and, you know, having problems with my PTSD, mm -hmm. I decided to start going to therapy again. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had done some therapy when I was like 19 and kind of worked through a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but the fun thing about trauma is mm -hmm. you can think you're past it and then all of a sudden it hits you again in oh, maybe a little bit warning. different way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then when you like that feeling, describe that feeling that you feel like, okay, I think I'm, I passed it. And then describe yeah, the feeling like, of like, oh, whoa. I'm, you know, I'm not having anxiety attacks. I feel very upbeat, you know, like, um, I feel, you know, really healthy because then um, also a, a symptom of trauma is it lives in your body and mm -hmm. it can make you physically ill. Um, so I actually have periods of time right now. I'm going through a period of adrenal fatigue. What is that? Um, so it's when your hormones are imbalanced and um, your body is in a constant state of fight or flight because of your anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so your cortisol level spikes and um, it just throws everything off. So you have um, trouble sleeping. I mean, I can be in bed for nine hours and feel like I maybe got five hours of sleep. Um, you just feel really tired, mm -hmm. um, sluggish, brain fog can be a part of it, um, weight gain for, you know, like you can eat all the right things and be exercising. And um, unfortunately with females, our bodies are very sensitive to the stress hormone cortisol. Mm -hmm. So um, just dealing, you know, yeah, with all, all that stuff that comes with it. So, wow. Yeah. Um, wow, Jasmine. I I just feel like I need to pause this interview and just give you a hug, but <laughs> I promise we'll do that after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like I said, I was, you know, so dealing with, a, you know, I said, and poor Jesse, you mm -hmm. know, trying to understand and manage and um, be patient and empathetic, but also have no idea, you know, it doesn't suffer from anxiety or anything. So mm -hmm. very hard to understand. Um, so I, I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> I need mm -hmm. to get back into therapy and kind of reprocess and deal with this. Mm -hmm. Um, however, you know, like I said, my family motto was to shut it down and pretend pray it didn't it. happen mm -hmm. and yeah, just pray and everything will be great. Um, so you know, when you're so good at what they call dissociating, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, once I kind of let that, you know, open back up, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, you know, that's where I'm at. For the last year, I tried EMDR therapy. Um, what is EMDR? I can't, <laughs> I can't remember what it okay, stands just for. Just the concept of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, there's different forms. So you can do tapping. Um, so what you, it's pro, um, trauma processing. Uh -huh. And so you can do tapping, you can do eye movement. Um, I held on to these things that buzzed in my hands. Mm -hmm. And basically you're trying to rewire your brain mm -hmm. and, um, you know, rewire the cognitive thought patterns that come with trauma. Mm -hmm. So um, you're 
basically sitting there for 30 to 45 minutes just thinking about your trauma. Wow. Yeah. Which I had relieving it. Yes. Which I had never really done. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, you know, dissociated, um, let, you know, just trying to push in the back burner. Yep. Yep. Just now you really bring it back. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you just sit there and that's literally all you do. Mm -hmm. And so that actually, (laughs) um, made my physical symptoms, um, kind of reactivate. So again, that's right now why I'm struggling again with like, um, my, chest is always tight. I'm constantly in fight or flight. Um, you know, I'm struggling with adrenal fatigue again right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so after, and, um, I, my therapist said, okay, maybe reopen the door for communication with your mom. She might be in a place to be ready to try to understand or empathize, be open. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have, it's not going well, so that doesn't help it either. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I decided um, that the EMDR was, is not right for me because instead of helping, it's actually made me worse, mm-hmm. which, um, you know, maybe if I stick with it, so, you know, some things can get worse before they get better. Um, but I just don't like feeling the way I feel right Mm -hmm. now. And Mm -hmm. there's other avenues that you can do to help. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start exploring different options for, um, therapy and treatment. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, so have you found something that works for you? Let's say, you know, a thought crosses your mind and you're starting, you know, to feel all the symptoms or some, Mm -hmm. is there something that you do? Um, for self-care that kind of grounds you and kind of helps you through the, you know, through day to day. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I rely heavily on meditation. I just actually found an app called fit mind Mm -hmm. that helps, um, guide you through meditations Mm -hmm. and helps to rewire thought patterns in your brain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's, um, it's very individual and, um, EMDR has been very successful for a lot of people. So Mm -hmm. I'm not saying just because that didn't work for me, it's, you know, the wrong choice for anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and that's what makes it so hard. I think sometimes to treat mental illness is Mm -hmm. it's very individual Mm -hmm. how, um, how the patient um, responds Mm -hmm. to different therapies or treatments or even um, psych meds, Mm -hmm. you know, there's, some can make you worse, Mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just very individual to the person on how, how they heal or Mm -hmm. if, if they, you know, choose to, some people, you know, don't get the courage to open Pandora's box, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For fear of going there. Yeah. And it's, and and I like the fact that you say it's very individual because Mm -hmm. I think that also shifts our mindset in a way that you can just group mental health and then this is the treatment plan, go for it. It's more, this is how you're feeling as an individual. Let's walk through your own process and design a treatment plan that works for you personally. Right, right. And that's kind of been... Mm-hmm. you know, my own journey, the last, you know, oh, like I said, I really started kind of delving into trying to heal, um, when I was 19 mm-hmm. and then it, you know, and I felt better for a long time mm-hmm. until I didn't. Um, so now it's just seeing what other avenues I can do to mm-hmm. help myself again. Wow. So, so there's, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up trends or different facets to this. So there's the individual mm-hmm. where you're identifying these are my triggers. This is how I feel and I need, I need, I need to feel better yeah. and I need maybe a professional. Yeah. And I'm also seeing the part where a professional comes in with let's try this different options. And then also, I'm also seeing the community a little bit where it depends on the type of support system you're getting or not getting to help you through navigate through this journey. Right. Right. So. Yeah. If you don't have um, somebody in your corner, you know, I'm very thankful that Jesse tries to be as 
understanding and empathetic as he can. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, he's like, whatever it takes to, um, help you, Mm -hmm. you know? So if that's spending a hundred dollars on therapy every single week, then that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Cause unfortunately, um, insurance doesn't really cover to go to a therapist. What? Yeah. There's very few and far in between um, for insurance that help cover. Oh my goodness. And that's also part of the problem. That is part of why we need to have these conversations more. Right. So maybe even create some change. Okay, now I'm getting into my... <laughs> no, for... <laughs> yeah. My... Yeah. But that is... It's very crazy because insurance will cover headache. If I have a headache right now and I go to my doctor, I'll be covered. Right. But then if I have, that is, wow, that, it, it just blows my mind. Right. So let's say, you know, you, you, you're opening up mm -hmm. to someone, either someone you just met or a close friend or just anyone. Mm -hmm. And then you let them know about, hey, I, I go through this or I suffer th with this. How would, how would you expect, like not even expect, what would a good response to you look like? And I'm not just saying you, cause it's, you know, sure. it's other people too. Yeah. But because sometimes you, you can, you never know again, you know, if, if someone's sharing their stories, sometimes we don't know how to maybe like without, you know, because people internalize other people's stories. And then right. now I'm just like, you know, projecting my own thoughts on it and I'm telling you how I feel. But when you're sharing your stories, what would, a, would be a good response or good conversation look like? Yeah. So I like how you just brought up a headache because, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it's, you know, almost similar. Like if I say, Trudy, I, you know, I, ha I don't feel good. I have a headache. Mm -hmm. You are going to say... You know, like, I hope you feel better. Yeah. Or, or do, you know, do you, can I help you? Um, what do you need? You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and I get it. It's uncomfortable for some people to talk about, you know, um, abuse and mm -hmm. trauma and different things like that. So they, you know, it's great to ask this question, mm -hmm. but that's, that's all we're looking for mm -hmm. is like, I'm sorry that happened to you. Mm -hmm. Um, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you for sharing. I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. we don't necessarily want solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just want to share who we are with you mm -hmm. and be accepted mm -hmm. and still be loved. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the time when you have um, depression, anxiety, PTSD, mm -hmm. you feel very, um, alone and sometimes you even feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people, well, if I would have done this differently or if I could have been this person instead, mm -hmm. um, you know, so to just have somebody just truly, um, love you anyway mm -hmm. and let them know that, you know, they're, they're there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And it just resonated with, uh, there's an interview I did just before yours um, for Brienne Ward. And there's a, something she said that really resonated with me. And it, it made me think. It made me think because today, in, in today's world, I will walk down the street and I'll just, it, it's, it's common practice. It's like, oh, hi, how are you? And then right. we're always programmed to expect uh, I'm good back. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's it. It's just like a very, right. hi, how are you? I'm good. And you're going on. But what she said is if you ask someone how they're doing, mm -hmm. be like, make sure you want to hear the answer. Right. If you don't want to hear the answer, don't ask. Right. And it just, it ties into what you're saying. If you, if you, if you're saying, if, you, if you're opening up to someone, at least acknowledge that you received information and show support in your words. Yeah. Wow. And it's even okay to say, I don't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. Or um, I'm not, I'm not sure how to respond, but I love you. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a, cause not, not everybody knows even, you no, know, knows what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even me sometimes, you know, and I can feel the same way with somebody else sharing. Mm -hmm. I can be like, Oh, okay. You know, like, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know. You just, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and Jasmine, 
I, again, I applaud you for sharing your story. I know this is not an easy subject. It's one of those subjects that's very complex mm -hmm. that we almost need several sessions just to break it down and understand it right. um, in layman's terms. So I really, truly applaud you for just being brave and sharing your story. I held back my tears a lot <laughs> because I didn't want to make you uncomfortable and not be able to freely share your story. So with that being said, is there something that you would like, you know, someone going through the process, or maybe someone who is not there yet, and by saying is not there yet, is they know something is not right, right? but they're just not there yet where I don't know if I'm ready to let someone know, or I'm not, I, know, I don't know if I'm ready to let my family or a professional or anybody know. Or maybe even themselves. Accept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell such a person or, you know, just from your own experience, definitely? Yeah, well, that's a tough one because, you know, there, there is, you know, still a lot of stigma. Um, but there is always going to be somebody that is there for you. Mm -hmm. There is always going to be somebody that cares. Mm -hmm. um, even if you can't afford therapy um, with a psychologist, there are other avenues that you can, you know, um, go. There's Facebook support groups. Mm -hmm. um, there's in-person support groups. That, you know, there's um, a lot of different apps nowadays for like meditation. Mm -hmm. um, I just really delve into um, trying to educate myself too. Mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of self-help books. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of self-help podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just really try to educate yourself on how you can be your own advocate. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is powerful. Being your own advocate mm -hmm. and not yeah. ex expecting someone else to advocate for you necessarily, but starts with you. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. And I don't want to close you out just in case, you know, someone's watching right now and they're very inspired by your story. They're very inspired by your journey. They're very inspired by your bravery. What would you tell such a person in form of, you know, an advice or even just a word of encouragement? Um, you are loved. You are worth healing. And um, it's tough going through it, but it can always get better. Wow. <laughs> this has been the hardest interview I've had <laughs> to do. <laughs> Um, thank you so much again um, mm -hmm. for sharing your story. I love you, Jasmine. And <laughs> I'm so glad that our paths crossed. Mm -hmm. And um, I would love to continue supporting you. And if there's anything that I can do to support you through your journey, let me know. Thank you. I am here, and sometimes I really don't know what to say in some situations, but I am here. Thank you. I love you too, Trudy. Thank you. And everybody else who's watching at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that's a, another mechanism. We'll just laugh when... <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody else who's watching at home, I hope, you know, this message spoke to you or it spoke to someone that you know, someone that's going through this. Um, it's, it's a very... It's a subject that hasn't really been spoken a lot. And I think we just need to continue having these conversations to a point where... It's, it's, it's comfortable for everyone to share what they're going through. Um, and if you know someone who, you know, is going through something, like Jasmine said, you can tell them, you know, that you love them or, you know, thank you for sharing and all the advice that she gave because she is speaking from our own experiences. Again, thank you so much for being with us. And to learn more about With Trudy Media um, or Conversational Lounge Media, you can go to withtrudy.com and follow, subscribe, you know, share the articles there and together we can, we can learn more. So again, until next time, have a wonderful day. We would like to normalize having these conversations. They're not easy conversations to be had, but the more we talk about them, the more we engage and learn something 
from you know other people's experiences then we can all learn and grow as a society